Here we go again. Manchester United players have returned to their Carrington training ground today, preparing for their important Premier League match against Brentford, set for this weekend. Following the international break, the squad is working hard to get back in shape and ready for action. Under the watchful eye of manager Eric Ten Hag and his coaching team, the players have been participating in various training sessions designed to boost their performance. These sessions have focused on improving fitness, sharpening tactics, and building team chemistry. Players have been working on key areas such as passing, positioning, and finishing in front of goal. In addition to tactical drills, the coaching staff has pushed the players to strengthen their defensive organization aiming to avoid some of the defensive errors that have been seen in previous matches. Eric Ten Hag is determined to see a solid performance on the pitch this weekend. However, not all news from Carrington has been positive. According to the latest updates from the Manchester United website and reports from outlets like Manchester Evening News and The Sun, a few players are still recovering from injuries picked up in previous games or while on international duty. Key players remain doubtful for the Brentford match, and the team is working to manage these injuries carefully. The coaching and medical staff are doing their best to get everyone back to full fitness as quickly as possible, without rushing their recovery. Despite these injury concerns, Manchester United fans are hopeful the team will deliver a strong performance against Brentford and start building momentum as they continue their Premier League campaign. Despite these injury concerns, Manchester United fans are hopeful the team will deliver a strong performance against Brentford and start building momentum as they continue their Premier League campaign. The team has shown resilience in past seasons when faced with similar challenges, and Ten Hag will be counting on both experienced players and emerging talents to step up in the absence of key figures. Players like Bruno Fernandes, who returned from international duty, and Marcus Rashford, who has been sharp in training, are expected to lead the charge. Younger talents, such as Alejandro Garnacho and Ahmad Diallo, have also been pushing hard during training and might get the chance to make an impact. With the squad working together under Ten Hag's system, the focus will be on delivering a solid team performance, regardless of who is on the pitch. As the match day approaches, United supporters will be eagerly watching to see how the team responds, hoping for a win that can lift the spirits of both the players and fans alike. Victory over Brentford could be the spark needed to drive the team forward in the upcoming fixtures. In other news, Manchester United are back in action this week after returning from international duty. The Red Devils take on Brentford at Old Trafford this weekend and will be keen for a positive result after a turbulent few weeks. Eric Ten Hag has been at the heart of things, with his job in huge question. There were suggestions that the Dutchman could have been sacked after a rotten run of form, but Sir Jim Ratcliffe has given him a stay of execution for the time being. That could all change with another negative result against Brentford, though. Ahead of the weekend's game, take a look at the standout headlines from the past 24 hours from Old Trafford. So, Zidane backed for move, from one former United boss to a potential future one. The Red Devils have been urged to make a move for former Real Madrid tactician Zinedine Zidane, and Emmanuel Petit has now told the club what they need to do to make the move happen. I'm not sure that he speaks very good English as well, and communication is very important in the dressing room. Honestly, I know a little bit Zizou, Zidane, and he needs to get guarantees if he wants to sign over there in Manchester United, Petit told the Manchester Evening News. At the moment, the environment at Manchester United for years has not been good. The stability of the bench, the level of the players as well, the expectation of the club is not the same that it used to be. United is still a huge club, but not on the pitch anymore. And Zizou is very conscious and very careful about that, the quality of the players. At the moment, when you look at the team, I'm not convinced at all about the level of some players. If he takes the job at Manchester United, that means he's got solutions. Meanwhile, United looks set to be able to call upon Rasmus Hoyland this weekend after being offered an update on the striker's fitness. There were worries after the Dane did not join his international teammates for an open recovery season after Denmark's 1-0 defeat to Spain. However, he then returned to training on Monday ahead of Tuesday's showdown with Switzerland. Hoyland has made just five appearances for the Red Devils so far this season, scoring once in the 3-3 Europa League draw with Porto. 
On the other hand, Thomas Tuchel recently spoke about his decision to join the England national team instead of Manchester United. When asked why he made this choice, Tuchel said he was drawn to the vision of the FA, Football Association, and how their CEO, Mark Bullingham, presented the project to him. Tuchel clarified that his decision was not about rejecting Manchester United or any other club. It was a choice for this job, not against anyone else, he explained. It's clear that the opportunity to lead the England team, along with the direction the FA offered, played a big role in Tuchel's decision. Again and again. Eric Ten Hag may have to think outside the box at fullback on Saturday when Brentford visit Old Trafford in the Premier League. As Tyrell Malaysia and Luke Shaw are still on the comeback trail from long-term injuries, Diogo Delo has been ever-present on that flank this season, with new signing Nusser Mazraoui deployed on the right side of defense. However, Mazraoui was withdrawn at half-time of our most recent fixture, the goalless draw at Aston Villa, and he subsequently pulled out of the Morocco squad. It remains to be seen whether the former Ajax and Bayern Munich defender will be fit to take on the Bees, and Ten Hag is expected to provide an update in his press conference on Friday. But if he is unavailable, then Johnny Evans or Victor Lindelof could be asked to deputize. Harry Amass, the 17-year-old prospect, was a regular in the position during our preseason tour, but despite seven appearances for the under-21s, he has not been selected in a first-team squad yet this season. Harry Maguire has joined Lenny Yoro on the sidelines, with the England international ruled out for a few weeks after suffering a muscle injury at Villa Park. In midfield, there appears to be a fresh concern regarding Manuel Ugarte, who was forced off in the closing stages of Uruguay's 0-0 draw with Ecuador in South America's World Cup qualifiers, while Mason Mount has missed our last two fixtures, having picked up a head injury and a knock during September's 3-0 defeat to Tottenham. Ten Hag will hope the issues that led to Ahmad, Alejandro Garnacho, and Kabi Mainu missing the international games have subsided as the Reds seek to end a run of five winless games in all competitions against a side which is yet to pick up an away point in 2024-25, albeit on the back of a difficult run of fixtures that has featured visits to Liverpool, Manchester City, and Tottenham. The Dutchman's press conference is being streamed on Friday afternoon. Meanwhile, the B's international players seem to have safely returned without any issues, unlike in September's break. Matthias Jensen, who scored for Brentford at Old Trafford in October 2023, has been unavailable due to a calf injury suffered while training with Denmark last month, but he is edging closer to a return and could be in contention to feature. Rico Henry, knee, and Joane Wissa, ankle, are also progressing well, according to manager Thomas Frank, but probably won't be ready until at least November. Josh De Silva, knee, is further away from playing again, while the wait for the debuts of summer arrivals Gustavo Nunes, back, and Igor Tiago, knee, will continue for a while yet. Aaron Hickey will miss the majority of the season having undergone hamstring surgery in August. In other news, if Pep Guardiola and Carlo Ancelotti make up two-thirds of the world's best three managers, then who accounts for the other 33%? And could he end up at Manchester United as a replacement for Eric Ten Hag? According to the man who handed him his big break in management, the answer to the first question is none other than Simone Inzaghi. As for the second, amid reports in Italy claiming that Manchester United have an interest in a man now in the Inter Milan dugout, well, it's safe to say Inzaghi is in no rush to leave the reigning Serie A champions in the lurch. While Eric Ten Hag appears to have been given a stay of execution by Ineos, surviving the October axe but under serious pressure to turn things around and fast, Inzaghi's focus is fixed unblinkingly on defending his Scudetto throne. Inzaghi always had a reputation for succeeding in cup competitions. He won the Coppa Italia with Lazio in 2019 while guiding the Bianco Celesti to two Super Coppa Italiana triumphs. But as former Italy international Inzaghi turned around his Inter Milan career, reaching the Champions League final and claiming the Scudetto to put those sack rumors firmly in the rearview mirror, 
His old Stadio Olimpico boss, Igli Tare, cannot speak highly enough of a man whose reputation and self-confidence continues to grow year on year. I consider him one of the two or three best coaches in the world, together with Ancelotti and Guardiola. Guardiola himself is a committed member of the Inzaghi fan club. His Manchester City team relied on a Rodri winner and some glaring Romelu Lukaku misses to claim the treble at the Nerazzurri's expense back in 2023 after all. And, post-match, Guardiola lauded an Inter Milan outfit very well coached by Inzaghi, a man who has reportedly been identified to join him in England's Northwest. According to reports, Manchester United held a brief phone call with Andre Onana's former San Siro boss back in September. Not only is Inzaghi keen to stay at Inter right now, however, he is also keen to sign a new contract and commit his long-term future to the Italian giants. For him, those Man United links are a huge sign of respect. Inter icon Antonio Paganin, who won two UEFA Cup titles with the Nerazzurri, told Tutamercato Web last week. If we also think about a year and a half ago when he was on the grill. Now, it seems like the world has turned upside down. Well done Inzaghi, who has put himself on the line and brought innovations to Inter. Paganin does have some doubts, however, about whether Inzaghi's currently free-flowing three-at-the-back system could cope in the Premier League. Bringing the three-man system to a world that always plays with four at the back, I don't know if it could work. Paganin adds, if we think that you have to go to Manchester United, which is not among the elite of teams fighting for the title, I think it would be complicated, he would have nothing to lose. But for me, he would clash with a culture that is different, tactically speaking. In other news, Manchester United part owners Ineos have ended a multi-million pound ambassadorial contract with Sir Alex Ferguson. The legendary Scottish, 82, stepped down after 26 years at the helm in 2013, but penned an agreement which saw him become a global ambassador for the club soon after. It's emerged that the agreement, said to be worth in excess of two millions of pounds a year and in place since October 2013, has now been terminated by Ineos. Ferguson was told in a face-to-face -face meeting with Sir Jim Ratcliffe that the club were trying to reduce costs and that they were no longer in a position to continue paying him beyond this season. Sources have since indicated that the meeting was amicable and there is no issue between the club and Ferguson, who remains a non-executive director. Ratcliffe acquired a minority stake in his boyhood club back in December and has overseen a raft of off-field changes, including a shake-up of the club's backroom structure and a number of redundancies after outlining plans to axe 250 members of staff. The club were the second highest spenders among Premier League clubs in this summer's transfer market, after committing more than 200 millions of pounds on transfers in a bid to reshape manager Eric Ten Hag's playing squad. Ratcliffe previously waxed lyrical about Ferguson, who is the most successful manager in the club's history after winning 38 trophies during his storied tenure at Old Trafford. Speaking back in February, Ratcliffe said, He was the first person I met when I went up there which I think was the second week of January, and I had a meeting from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. at his house, and I left at 1 p.m. He never stopped. He's got a lot of experience, a lot of stories to tell, and a lot of thoughts about the club. I don't think he has been encouraged to get involved, but he is still very thoughtful about the club, and he has an immense amount of experience. He really understands the values and traditions of the club and what it's all about. He's still fiercely competitive, Alex Ferguson. Meanwhile, Manchester United is facing increasing injury problems, with manager Eric Ten Hag missing several key players. Mason Mount, Kabi Mainu, and Harry Maguire are out due to injuries. Luke Shaw will also be sidelined for another month after a setback in his recovery. Right-back Nusser Mazraoui recently had surgery after experiencing heart palpitations. While there were fears that his condition could be serious, updates suggest it's less severe. Mazraoui is expected to return in the next few weeks, providing hope for United's struggling defense. Morocco's national team coach, Walid Regragui, confirmed that Mazraoui's issue is minor and the player should be available for the November international break. Luke Shaw and Tyrell Malaysia are also nearing returns, adding to the defensive options. However, Harry Maguire's absence will stretch the squad further, 
increasing the pressure on Ten Hag during the coming weeks as the team navigates important fixtures. On the other side, whenever a Manchester United manager is on shaky ground, two legendary words pop up. Zinedine Zidane. The France and Real Madrid icon has been linked with United numerous times over the years, towards the end of Jose Mourinho's tenure, after Ola Gunnar Solskjaer got the chop, and now, albeit more loosely, with Eric Ten Hag clinging onto his job following a torrid start to the season. Whenever a job at an elite-level club comes up, or is close to being available, Zidane's name is usually chucked into the frame. The closest he has come to joining United was following Solskjaer's dismissal, only for the World Cup and Euros winner to rule himself out. Reports in France suggest he is being lined up to replace Didier Deschamps as his nation's boss. Given Deschamps has won the World Cup as both a player and manager, appointing a figure of Zidane's standing would make sense. However, according to French outlet RMC, Deschamps isn't planning to step down soon as he is eager to avoid Zidane trampling over his legacy. Therefore, United may have a free shot at Zidane should Ten Hag be let go in the coming weeks. However, Zidane and his agent's previous remarks about United and English football in general suggest the finest player of his generation won't be setting foot in the home dugout at Old Trafford anytime soon. There was a window of opportunity in 2018 between Zidane's two spells at Real. However, his agent, Alain Migliaccio, warned at the time, I do not think that he will manage in England. It is much less his style. I have discussed it with him. It does not really attract him. Fast forward to 2021, and Zidane was again linked with United following Solskjaer's sacking, only for the man himself, who speaks limited English, to point out why it wasn't the job for him. Would I want to go to Manchester United? I understand English, but I'm not completely fluent in it," he told French outlet L'Equipe. I know that there are coaches who go to clubs without speaking the language, but I work in a different way. Many elements come into play in order to win. It is a global context. I know what I need to win. Unless Zidane has brushed up on his English, United may again have to look elsewhere, with Thomas Tuchel still in the club's thoughts, having held talks in the summer before Ten Hag was given a stay of execution. On the other hand, Manchester United has reportedly decided to let Brazilian winger Antony leave during the January transfer window. According to transfer expert Fabrizio Romano, the club is open to letting Antony go either on loan or through a permanent transfer. Several clubs have shown interest in signing the 23-year-old. Former club Ajax, Newcastle United, and Crystal Palace are said to be among the potential destinations for the winger. Antony has struggled to make a big impact at Old Trafford since his move in 2022, and this decision could provide a fresh start for the player elsewhere. As January approaches, it will be interesting to see where Antony ends up and how Manchester United plans to adjust its squad. Keep an eye on updates on this platform as this story develops.